as you've seen, Rebels GUI syntax makes it very easy to create items that do things when they're clicked with the mouse. For example, this is a typical sort of example that you've seen so far. We create a GUI with the words view layout. We have a, a block. This one contains a button with the text click me. And then whenever that button's clicked, uh, we can make it do something by including an action block afterwards. You've seen that sort of thing uh, a number of times already in all of the GUIs. So for example, in this case, we've got a little GUI. Um, uh, the button when it's clicked on alerts us with some text. But say, for example, you want your GUIs to do something other than uh, respond when a mouse clicks ha uh, when a mouse click happens directly on a widget. For example, if you want to have um, uh, the program react whenever the mouse moves anywhere uh, on the screen, that would that would happen. For example, in a paint program, or if you want to have the um, widget or the program respond after a certain amount of time has passed, that's another common uh, occurrence in programs. What you do is a, you use this uh, syntax called uh, feel. Uh, it's an, actually an object that we can attach to any uh, GUI widget and you put it directly after um, after the widget. So in this case we have some text inside a, a layout, inside a GUI. The text says click, right click, uh, drag the mouse over the text. Uh, we put feel and we have a block of things that happen inside that feel object. Uh, we create a function which we're here calling engage. Um, that function takes three arguments, three parameters, uh, the face parameter, the action parameter, and the event parameter. And we can use those in the, uh, the code of that function, uh, the things that happen whenever that feel is um, um, uh, activated. Uh, in this case, we're going to print the action that happens, and we're also going to print the uh, position, the offset, of where the event occurred. Uh, that's the basic layout. And put that into Rebel here so you can see it work. Uh, in this case, uh, it says click, right click, and drag the mouse over the text. Watch the Rebel interpreter, and you'll see that as I click on it and move the mouse around, it's showing uh, over and away from the object at the pixel position that it occurs. Uh, when I lift up, you see it says up and down. And when I hold it, that's when the over and aways happen. And when I right click on the text, I alternate up and alternate down and over and away. Uh, so it gets all the possibilities of mouse clicks uh, in this case. Uh, there's a shorthand version of um, representing that in code. Most often you'll see that function uh, just use F. A and E, I guess, again, face, action, and event parameters are usually just represented by an F and A and E, a little bit quicker to write. Uh, so this code does basically the same thing, a little shorter text that says mouse me, but again, we have attached to that an object with feel, a uh, block of code that has the engage function with F, A, and E parameters. Here we're going to print the action and we're going to print uh, the event offset. It's going to be basically the same thing smaller GUI that just says mouse me. Uh, it works the same way. Over and away, up, down, up, down, up, down, right, up, down, up, down, and over and away. And we'll use that format throughout the rest of the section. Um, okay. To respond to events in the function, you can basically do whatever you want. You can use conditionals to check what's actually happening. So in this case, you saw the up, uh, the up uh, action. So here we're going to check for that. If the action equals up, we're going to print. You just release the mouse. And in this case, uh, all that's happening is we're checking. Instead of printing everything that happens, we're checking to see. We have that same little mouse me text. But this time when I move around, nothing happens until I lift up. Then you see it says you just release the mouse. I just release the mouse. I can move around and it doesn't do anything until I release the, release the mouse because we've put in that conditional operation that checks for up. Uh, one of the other things that you can do is check for timing events. 
In this case, we've got a another GUI with some text. This text has a timer event attached, and you'll see the word rate. And in this case, that's half a second. Uh, we assign the feel object again. And in this case, in the function, we're checking to see if the action is a time action. If the action is time, then we're going to print one half second has passed. Put this in here. GUI. And then you'll see one half second has passed, one half second has passed. Because the rate is one half second. You can set that rate to be any amount of time. In this next example, we're going to use a rate of zero. So here what we're doing is creating a view layout. Again, with the size refinement, so at the very end of the block, you see the size is going to be 400 by 400 pixels. And uh, we're creating a button inside that GUI. We're labeling it mover. We're going to need that label because we need to refer to the button in the code here. Um, that has a rate of zero, which means uh, there's no wait at all for these actions to be checked. Every zero seconds it's going to check. Uh, again, we create a feel object uh, with the engage function. And again, we have a conditional. If the action is time, what we're going to do. So every zero seconds, um, what we're going to do is set movers offset, the position of the mover button, to be its existing position plus five pixels, and then we're going to update show that show that button. So what we're doing here is creating an animation every zero seconds. If the action is time, we're going to update that button's position, move it five pixels over and five pixels down, and update the display. Put that in, and that's the basis for uh, creating animation. Um, paste this in here. Bam moves it down across the screen. That's actually co continuing to move down across the screen um, off of the GUI. Um, you can use that same idea um, to enable drag and drop operations for anything in a GUI. What happens here, again, we've got some text. It says click to drag this text. We're assigning a feel object. And we've got the engage function, F, A, and E. If the action is a down action, means if, meaning if we clicked on something, we're going to create this variable. If this is true, here's the block that happens if it's true. The initial dash position is going to be the events offset. So if we click down, we're saving the position where that mouse click occurs. Event offset is where that mouse click occurs. And then if we find, so now it's going through this again, so we're done. Um, if we find an over or an away um, action, then what we're going to do is take the face's offset, this text's offset, its position, and set it to its current position plus the difference between the offset where the event occurred and its initial position. So what we're essentially doing is following the, uh, the mouse. We're moving the face to be equal to its existing position plus where we move the mouse. We need that initial position so that uh, we can make it equal exactly to where the, the face is. And we update that view and again this is just the uh, size of the layout that occurs after the block. Put that all into the GUI. And now you can see we've got a nice big 640 by 480 um, canvas. Now we click on that, it moves it around. And that's the basic code that you use to create click and draggable items and GUIs.